Hello everybody and welcome to Organius Puzzle Box. In today's video we're delving into a topic that a lot of you have been asking me about. How to create nice looking clouds in Blender. So if you're trying to create a realistic cloud in your 3D uh, render, we just can't seem to get them right, then this tutorial is for you. Because today we're going to be going through the setup of a nice shader, nice and easy, to make your cloud looks, clouds look really good. So these are VDB files that we're going to be using, but you can also create volumes inside Blender that could be uh, converted into a cloud if you want to. But we're going to stick to the VDB format. Now I have done a similar video for this in which I've explained how to use my VDB collection in Unreal Engine uh, as a, you know, to pay as clouds. So check that video if you want to see it. Now clouds can be a very tough nut to crack. So, you know, just to get a really nice looking cloud in 3D is not very simple. There are several ways to, you know, several things to consider like the ambient occlusion, light bounces, shadows, the volumetric of it, the density and more. So it can be a bit overwhelming and that's why reference is key. If you don't get the right reference, then you're not going to be able to get a nice looking cloud. Uh, you probably noticed some grass, grass going crazy behind me. <laughs> anyway, uh, but, you know, meticulously gathering a real world data is very, very important. It's crucial for this. And this is why you are seeing me in, you know, uh, out there taking reference of clouds. Actually, I went to Lake Como in Italy to be able to do that. And, you know, I've, I've been meticulously gathering a lot of data, a lot of videos, a lot of footage, a lot of uh, photos of that, just so I can create my, you know, nice looking clouds in Embergen. And speaking of, I've got the cloud pack that you can grab right now from our station. It's a resource I've put together to help you craft beautiful uh, cloudscapes or landscapes without the guesswork. Plus, it includes a free sample of the free VDB clouds. So feel free to give those a try. And if you enjoy it, if you want to have all the collection of those clouds, just, you know, take a look at the pack. Uh, so, yeah, let's begin the tutorial. Okay, I've got my Blender file open here. It's just a simple blank project. So I'm going to delete the light and the cube in the scene. And I'm just going to keep the camera in case I want to render it. So we need to do a bit of setup for the scene. So the first thing, we want to add a skylight environment. And we can do that very easily in Blender by using a node called a skylight texture. So what we're going to do is we're just going to separate the viewport in two. And I'm going to open this as a uh, shader editor and go to the world option. And over in here, you can see we've got a background node. So in, in there, we can just type in, we can type in, sorry, sky texture. And we've got Nishita loaded up. And I can take the color from this and connect it over here. Now, I want to switch over to render view. And now you can see, so this is what it was without. And this is with the Nishita sky texture. Another thing I want to do is I'm going to change this to cycles as we're doing this in cycles, not EV. And I'm going to change the CPU to the GPU as well so we get the, the speed. Now, also, we want to play around with the settings of the Nishita sky texture. So, for example, we could say, you know, the elevation of the sun could be a bit lower. We can also add a bit more ozone like that. So just to give it a bit of a nicer sort of uh, look. And, you know, I'm just sort of doing something like that just to have like a blue tinned sky. Right. And with that done, over here into the render settings, I want to put my, you know, the viewport, my samples to like 256 and the render samples again, 256 with denoise on. No denoise for the viewport because we want to be able to see what we're doing. And uh, over here into the volumes, we can set this to a 0 0.1 if you want to get a nicer look. And then again, steps about 256. So that's the initial setup for the scene, you know, to have a sky texture. And we're now ready to import our VDB cloud. All right, let's add the, the VDB. So I'm going to press Shift A and go to volume and import open VDB. This option will be available in all of the Blender versions, I think, after 3.0. Uh, so I'm just going to go into the folder where I've got it and I'm going to take this VDB, double click it and this will bring it into the scene. Now you're going to notice it's not visible and that's because it's very big. One thing to do in here is press N on the keyboard and go over to your view file over here. Ensure the clip start is 0.001 and at the end you could probably do it like this so you can see as far away as possible. Now the VDB has no material, we can't see anything that's going on with it so we need to fix that. Um, so I'm going to change this to our object uh, material and I'm going to go to the material tab of the VDB and I can press the plus button. By default, uh, Blender will throw in a 
be a principal volume to this and this is you know this is what it looks like uh, basically um, and it's not that great because you are just not getting the nice uh, look of a cloud it's more like dust or smoke or definitely not a cloud here you can see the default shader that we've got over on this side as opposed to the shader that I, we create in this tutorial and what you notice is that in the default shader the light just doesn't seem to be traveling through in here very nicely because the density is just set up based on the vdb and whatever its uh, origin was while in here we get some nice you know we get these really cool highlights around these points in here but then we don't you know all around in here there's like really good um, highlights because of that and also this sort of fluffy edge around here that you don't actually get around in this part of the cloud now you might be saying well it's because you know uh, in this uh, render you've got this side here which is more shadow uh, on this end over here but then over here you have a lot of light coming through but that's not true because right here right right in this area it should be just as bright as so this is like we say number one right here number two it should be just as bright in both of these so you can see that the uh, cloud the vdb is eating a lot more is eating a lot more light in the second in the default shader than it is in the new shader and the new shader can actually be um as i said artistically directed to look a lot better than what it does so yeah there's you know there's a really nice soft sort of ambient in here over in here you can see right there on the edge I'm not sure if that's visible I'm gonna try and just uh, zoom in in there but what you're what you're really noticing is that whatever the this part of the cloud is above this part and it sort of creates a nicer shadow right over here uh, an ambient shadow um, and then this also happens obviously in the normal VDB one is the same sort of thing but here is so much more nicer and it's actually collecting information from the environment as well from the Nishita uh, sky texture which is really cool we're not going to be using the principal volume instead we're going to use another um, node for this which is the volume scatter node okay so let's delete the principal volume shift a type in volume scatter and we can plug this into the volume if we want like that uh, you're not really able to see anything but we can actually go in here and put a 0.5 as a value and we're still not noticing anything and that's because we need to add some other nodes to this like the density itself is a problem um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a light path node to take the shadow ray uh, you know basically we want to combine the shadows the, the density and the shadow of the of that's being generated by a density depending on where the light is hitting from uh, to create our cloud sort of look so with this i'm just going to search for a light path node okay and i've got the shadow ray in here which i can actually just plug into the density and again nothing really happens so what i want to do is i want to mix a uh between two values you know, determining with two, between two values to mix where the density is at its densest and where it's at its you know basically not so dense but depending on the shadow ray so i'm going to type in mix and i'm going to bring this node in here i'm going to drop it uh, i'm going to make sure that this is actually set to the factor of the mix node and i'm going to put a value let's say between 10 let's try 100 in here and see what happens right so so far we've got again nothing showing up now what we want to do is we want to be um, adding another volume scatter over here so we're going to duplicate that and we're going to make this uh, mix node basically be able to go in both of these nodes and we can add a shader right here and connect both of these and we're going to use the 0 0.9 value in here as well um sorry this is not the color it needs to go into the density of that so the color is always white you can obviously change the color to something else if you want to and now we need to resolve the density of our cloud so to do that we're going to use the array uh, depth of our uh, of our scene you know depending on how much these rays are sort of hitting and we're going to be using that to calculate the density between you know between the um, uh, shadow ray and the ray depth but we also need to go into our render settings in here uh, over here and to ensure that we have some light paths so we, we need to set this up to maybe like a 32 sample for the volume as well before proceeding so what i want to do is i'm going to sample the density of this cloud so i'm going to press shift a and then search for an attribute node 
and this is able to give us the information of the density of our cloud so i'm going to type in here density like that and this is now sampling the density from here okay and now i can search for a math node in here and i can switch this over to a multiply I'm going to connect the color of this into the multiply node and i'm going to connect the ray uh depth of the of the light path into this multiply uh, I'm then also I'm then going to drag this and I'm going to mix it. I'm going to sorry I'm going to multiply it between the shadow ray mix, mixture and this. So I'm just going to duplicate this mixture. I do need to pull both of these nodes sorry in here. Actually, you can see how these look like with the shadow ray disconnected, which that's very blocky and very ugly. Um, so I'm going to connect it. Sorry, not in the color. I keep doing that. And then I'm going to connect this over into uh, here. And then I'm going to connect this multiply over in here. Now, we need, we've we got a too much of a multiplication value. So I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to multiply by a 0 0.1 value in here. Okay. And another thing that we've got is we need to set up a sort of a, um, a you know, like, a, like a, a map range for the ray depth. So I'm going to look for map range I'm going to drop it in here make sure that this is connected to the value as you can see we're going to set this up to a 32 uh maximum of zero and a minimum of one and now we're getting the effect that we want so effectively we are looking um we, we are sampling the ray depth at 32 samples 32 bounces sorry to go in and we're, we're, we're multiplying that between the density of the vdb and the samples there feeding it into here uh, between the shadow ray and the uh, ray depth, right? And we're feeding into these two volume scatters. Now, these values here, you can play around with them if you want to sort of art direct where the light is sort of affecting the VDB. So that's fine. You can do that if you want. You can see how this changes based on these values. But another thing that you can do is also, for example, you can increase the shadow by adding a higher number here and you will be able to see this better if we sort of tilt the cloud like that and now you'll be able to see that even better so if for example i set up a value of one you can see there's no real shadow uh, but the more i increase this value the more shadow i get on the clouds because this is are they adding more density here where the shadow would be so that's why we're using the shadow ray so we can add more density where the shadow would be from the base on the light source and then this value in here, if we put this to like a one, you can see now that we're sort of losing um, um, a, a lot of the brightness of that because wherever there's, wherever the A value is uh, is being displayed, that's where there's no, that's where the light is hitting. So we're effectively saying, you know, we're multiply, we're increasing the brightness of that light hitting those areas where there's no sh where the where the light is hitting in right so that's why we need a bright value here so we get some nice uh bright values but again you can art direct this in however way you want and then this is what determines how harsh the shadows are wherever the shadows are right so i don't know i've never really tried you can see now that at a thousand is sort of uh, literally getting in the way of the light there as well so you probably need to drop this below 100 to actually get a decent effect um, so you can see now, as I decrease this, the fringe of the cloud will start getting brighter and brighter. Um, so I'm effectively clamping down that shadow. So I think this is why, you know, a value of 10 probably looks about right. So that's giving it a nice look. So if we let this to actually render now for a bit, we should be able to see what that uh, sort of cloud looks like. So I think I think instead of just uh, waiting for the render to be done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press zero on the keyboard. So I'm now in my camera, just going to zoom back. You can see the camera is not able to see the, the, the cloud. And that's because I need to select the camera, go in the camera settings and do the same thing, you know, clip start, make sure that this is seeing as far away as possible. So now I'm just going to sort of navigate backwards. So we've got the full frame of this, um, sort of hurricane 
and now we're going to render this and just have a look at what that looks like now this is the render that i've got with the sort of setup the skybox setup that i've got with the sheeta in that particular angle so you can see the light nicely traveling through this um, texture in here which is really really cool i like how it just creates these purples and blues and then some oranges in there as well this looks really cool so imagine if you were decreasing the density of the cloud but adding quite a bit of shadows into it with the control that you've got in here which i've told you guys about you know so you know you can add more shadows with this and more or, and decrease the highlights from here you can then also increase this multiplied to um oh sorry decreases multiplied to get lower density and you can get some really really cool results uh by just by just doing this effectively um, as I said, just getting uh, different um, abstract looks or realistic looks for the clouds, um, and you've know you've seen in the previous screenshots what this is uh, this is able to do. So that's pretty much the setup of the material that we've got right there. And that was the end of the tutorial. I hope you guys found this useful. I know I'm having a lot of fun creating these um, these these you know these new landscapes and new cloudscapes. Uh, but I would like to offer my sincere thank you to my patrons, to my Creo supporters, to people that have bought. My my projects to people that have bought me coffee you know how much i love coffee so if you want to support the channel if you want to buy one of my projects and buy me a coffee basically feel free to go and grab a project from our station or patreon or whatever uh everybody on patreon gets all the projects so you know you can have a look at that but uh, yeah i'll see you guys in the next tutorial please enjoy what i've uh, created today i'm i hope you do and yeah i'll see you guys in the next one bye